merci de vous installer. Nous allons encore donner quelques minutes afin que certaines personnes puissent nous rejoindre. Écoutez, je pense, je pense qu'on peut y aller. Alors, uh, hello everyone. This session will be in English. I hope that all of you will understand. Is that okay? Yes? Okay. Feel free to ask for a French translation if ever. Feel comfortable. Hello. So my name is Anne-Marie Diaz-Borges. I'm a senior manager at BBC Africa for Francophone TV. And welcome to you all to uh, this side event of the One Forest Summit, uh, centered around the theme of sustainable public-private partnerships in tropical zones. The talk is organized by Meridiam, which specializes, among many other things, in long-term management of sustainable public infrastructures in Europe, America, and Africa, of course, and FGIS, which is the Gabonese Sovereign Wealth Fund, which is a key player in the transformation of the Gabonese economy. And today we'll focus, ladies and gentlemen, on the Kingele Aval Hydro Project as a case study to explore our our topic. Welcome everyone, please take a seat. As a reminder, this hydro project, um, hydropower project, will deliver about 13% of the electricity needed in Libreville. It will also contribute to replacing thermal power capacity and save more than 150,000 tons of CO2 emissions per year. This is huge, and so you will understand why it's very important to talk about this today. It is a vital project for Gabon, but also for the rest of Africa and our dear continent, you know, is very vulnerable, one of the most vulnerable places on Earth, indeed, to uh, the impact of um, global uh, climate change. So it's very important to have this conversation, as you would understand. And our goal today is to look at how biodiversity has been handled during this project and find out how the challenge of sustainability has been addressed. And so, in an effort to highlight as many issues as possible today, and there are many, uh, you would appreciate that, we have decided to di divide uh, the panels today in two sections. The first panel will uh, center around the questions of biodiversity and preservation. And then the second panel will dive into the other very extremely important issue of financing. Uh, but first, I would like you to watch a short uh, presentation of the Kingele uh, Aval project, and we'll come back. Pas moins de six institutions et près d'une quinzaine de chercheurs internationaux. Grâce à des méthodologies innovantes, ils ont mis en évidence la présence de plusieurs espèces de flore rares ou menacées et de nombreuses espèces emblématiques de la faune du Gabon. Pour optimiser l'intégration environnementale du projet, Asona Energy, accompagnée par une équipe d'écologues franco-gabonaises, a veillé à éviter d'impacter au maximum ces espèces et s'est engagée à mettre en œuvre des mesures pour réduire au mieux les impacts résiduels. Ces mesures auxquelles les communautés riveraines ont été associées se traduisent par une optimisation du positionnement et du dimensionnement de l'ouvrage afin de limiter l'emprise du réservoir et le traçage de nouvelles routes. La création de deux pépinières de conservation visant à réintroduire des plantes d'espèces menacées dans leur milieu naturel après les travaux la compensation de la surface d'habitat naturel impactée par la création du sanctuaire de nature du bassin amont de la Bénimoug. Le renforcement de la lutte anti-braconnage autour des sites de construction et de compensation avec la coopération des autorités gabonaises, dont le personnel de l'Agence nationale des parcs nationaux. Le projet de Kingele Aval s'inscrit ainsi dans une démarche pilote consignant le développement énergétique du Gabon avec la préservation de son fabuleux patrimoine naturel mondialement reconnu. Un fabuleux patrimoine naturel, indeed. This is a bio biodiversity to its best here, and it's very important that we shall preserve it. Um, before diving into our first panels, I would just like you to know that you will have the opportunity to ask questions at the end of it. So if you do have questions to ask our panelists, please bear that in mind, and we'll have about 10, 15 minutes uh, to, to go through that. So for our first round table, it is my pleasure now, and ladies first, to call Mrs. Ginette Bordua, Ginette is a round of applause, please, for Ginette. Thank you. Ginette is head of ESG Sustainability Meridian. Ginette also has extensive experience in the drafting and implementation of sustainable development approaches, as well as in leading detailed environmental and social studies for major infrastructure projects. Be welcome, Ginette. Thank you. 
Egal, euh, également, let's welcome Reynald Boulnois, Biodiversity Consultant and Project Manager at Biotop. Welcome. Can we give him a round of applause as well? Biotop is a run based consultancy firm with a branch in Gabon. Forest engineer and field ecologist, Reynald is a habitat uh, conservation expert with over 20 years experience in this field, including eight in Gabon on various projects. I would also like to call Mr. Landrine Gala. Bienvenue, Monsieur Ngala. Responsable environnement et social chez Asona Energy, titulaire d'un master en biologie de l'environnement et spécialisé en évaluation et suivi environnemental des projets d'aménagement, Landry cumule plus de 10 ans d'expérience ayant notamment mené des actions de mise en œuvre et de suivi de plans de gestion dans de nombreux projets de développement. And last but certainly not least, I would like to call Mr. Sylvain Bouillet, CEO of Asona Energy. Welcome, Sylvain. Sylvain has 24 years of experience in managing energy projects, including 13 years implementing renewable energy projects for African countries. His mission at Asona Energy and the Kingele Aval project is to deliver the infrastructure in line with the grid standards and to prepare, and this is important, the next 30 years operation of the hydro power plant. So welcome to you all, our experts. So let's go straight to the first question. And I will start um, with you, actually, Reynald. So first of all, what practices have been put in place to minimize the impact of Kingele project on biodiversity, please? Uh, thank you. Hello, everybody. Let's try again. You hear me now? Okay, perfect. Um, so thank you for the question. Uh, basically, Kingele Aval has been developed based on the good international industry practices. Um, based on the robust baseline of biodiversity, we are talking just about biodiversity today, um, we have developed a set of measures uh, of actions uh, following what we call the mitigation hierarchy. Uh, you avoid the impact, uh, you reduce the impact you have not been able to avoid, then you restore what you can repair, and then you offset final step of this uh, mitigation, final step of the sequence in that order. So um, in the framework of King Eleaval, all of those actions have been included in what we call a biodiversity action plan, a BAP, a PAB in French. And uh, this BAP include also different documents for all activities Develop on site during, during construction, there is what we call a biodiversity management plan with the control, for example, of the, the relationship of the workers with any contact with the wildlife, the erosion control, the pollution of the water control, uh, things like that are included in the biodiversity management plan. Um, we also have a, an operation biodiversity management plan to, to, to take place when the project will, uh, will have been built and uh, the operation phase will start. For example, non-introduction of invasive species of fish in the reservoir of the dam. Uh, on, in addition to that, we have developed an offset um, to compensate the residual impact of the project. This is organized within the framework of the of a biodiversity offset management plan, BOMP. Um, and, and I would say to support all, the, all these plans, Uh, we have developed a Biodiversity Monitoring and Evaluation Plan, BMEP, sorry for the acronyms, um, that allows for adaptive management in case the target of each action is not reached and uh, to adapt the mitigation actions to, um, to, to, to reach the non-net loss objective or the net gain objective. We will discuss about that a bit later, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Reynald. Et je me tourne vers vous à présent, Landry. Alors, vous qui êtes sur le terrain euh, dans le cadre de ce euh, projet, est-ce que vous pouvez nous parler des mesures concrètes que vous avez mises en place euh, pour préserver la biodiversité dans le cadre de ce projet Merci, Anne-Marie. Merci pour l'occasion qui m'est donnée de, de présenter un peu les actions qui sont menées actuellement sur le terrain. Comme le disait Renard tout à l'heure, on a un plan d'action biodiversité qui est mis en place. 
ce plan d'action a été validé par les autorités gabonaises, mais également par les, les prêteurs. Dans le cadre de ce plan d'action, on a des mesures qui sont prévues dans le cadre du chantier, mais également des mesures qui sont prévues dans le cadre de la compensation. Ça peut être une approche habitat, compensation approche habitat et une compensation approche espèce. Euh, Renard a défini un peu ses actions. Moi, je vais vous expliquer comment elles sont mises en œuvre sur le terrain. Euh, dans, le cadre, dans le cadre des approches de, de la compensation par approche espèce, euh, nous sommes accompagnés hein, dans, ce, dans la mise en œuvre de, 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 ce, de ces actions par un groupe d'experts, hein, d'institutions de, et de, 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 de centres de recherche pour la mise en œuvre de ces actions. Nous avions donc euh, Biotop qui nous assiste dans euh, qui est notre assistant en matière de biodiversité. Et également, nous avions le Missouri Botanical, Missouri Botanical Garden et l'herbier national du Gabon qui nous aident, qui sont nos conseils scientifiques en matière de botanique et qui sont engagés depuis le début du projet sur ces actions. Nous avions également Charlie Gab, qui est une PME locale qui nous a aidés dans la construction de la pépinière. Euh, pour vous dire, sur le site, nous avions mis en place une pépinière, bon, il y en a deux, mais une pépinière qui est spécialement euh, mise en place pour les espèces qui sont dites menacées. Et donc, euh, euh, Jardin Gam nous a accompagnés dans la construction et nous aide dans tout ce qui est conseil en horticulture. Euh, on a un autre, une autre PME locale qui s'appelle euh, des consulting et qui est là pour la mise en œuvre, pour le suivi quotidien de cette pépinière. Euh, dans ce cadre, on a des très bons résultats. On a un peu plus de 30 espèces qui sont en culture. On a à peu près 1000 individus avec un taux de survie qui est autour de 70. C'est une moyenne, mais ça ne veut pas dire que toutes les plantes ont survécu ou bien ont des taux de rendement qui sont, des taux de survie qui sont relativement meilleurs. En, en moyenne, ça, ça se passe très bien. Euh, dans le cas de, 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 de toujours de cette compensation par espèce, nous avons le soutien de l'ANPEN, là c'est dans le cadre de la, de la faune. L'ANPEN nous soutient et est, est engagé avec nous dans le cadre d'une convention qui a été signée avec l'ANPEN sur ton temps. Et cette convention consiste en la lutte anti contre le braconnage, la lutte anti braconnage. Euh, les missions de, de l'ANPN ont commencé depuis le deuxième trimestre de 2022. Les résultats sont également satisfaisants. C'est vrai que euh, cette mission sont menées à la fois dans la zone de compensation, qui sera mm -hmm. un peu plus tard, mais également autour du parc national de monde de, de, monde de cristal. Très bien. On aura l'occasion de revenir, comme vous le dites, euh, sur cette zone de compensation. Uh, I would like, uh, right now, actually, to talk about um, everyone that's involved in uh, this project. And I now turn to uh, you, Sylvain. How does your company and staff guarantee these very high um, expectations? We've heard some of them. So, in other words, how do you successfully achieve uh, performance and biodiversity management? This is not an easy task. Thank you. So, as uh, Landry uh, illustrated, uh, biodi biodiversity management requires a lot of experts on the field, uh, but not only, actually. Uh, it also requires a lot of uh, managers and people able to coordinate all the experts and consultants going in the field, uh, managing the different uh, biodiversity plans. And uh, it requires also people able to analyze the data collected on the field and uh, to, to coordinate the relationship also with the public uh, administration, like NPN and uh, other administrations. So uh, this being said, ASONA has uh, hired all of the team in charge of uh, biodiversity, part of the environmental and social uh, department under Mr. Landry uh, leadership. And actually today in uh, ASONA, this is our um, uh, most important department. Uh, we have more people in charge of those questions than people in charge of uh, technical questions. 
Uh, so this is also because uh, the commitments that we are taking for biodiversity are 30 years commitments. So we are preparing the, the 30 years of uh, operation that we will have with the biodiversity management for all this time, capitalizing experience based on all the um, experts who work on the field. So there is a huge uh, capitalization um, done at the, at the office with all the data experience and so on. Mm -hmm. So it, it is about sustainability and really thinking long term, 30 years, that's a long time, so you have to prepare indeed. So you've mentioned a lot of people, uh, that include subtractors that you hire, so what about them? Do they share your uh, approach? Yes, of course, um, for, the, for the construction, we work with companies uh, who are not involved for 30 years in the, in the project, so the, the commitment might not be the same. Um, for Asona, we are a project company. We've been designed for the purpose of the project. So biodiversity management is part of our DNA. Uh, it was uh, planned since the beginning. It has been budgeted. We have uh, resources to, to hire people, etc., etc. The construction companies we work with uh, made their fame and uh, references through construction projects. So biodiversity is not their, I would say, first project they have to sell. But um, actually, uh, through the, the contract we place with them, they are committed to the same level of performance. Of course, the specifications of regarding biodiversity management are exactly at the same level as the technical specifications. So they are really committed to, to um, achieve the the results we want them to achieve. But uh, sometimes, um, for some of them, it's a new question, I think, to, to integrate biodiversity management in their uh, activity, construction activities. So um, also they share the, um, the vision and uh, the objectives. Uh, Asuna has to make a lot of support to them through um, sensibilization, through uh, field support, through training. And uh, this explains also why today we have such um, a big team uh, in charge of those questions. But I would say that um, I think the construction companies we work with um, understand it is important for the, this kind of project, understand it's a key factor today, and they, they play the game and they improve every day. And um, it reminds me a bit of the uh, history of uh, hydro projects 20 years ago when we started talking about safety. Um, safety was seen as uh, something, um, a source of delay on the site. People wanted, I mean, we, we used to say time is of the essence. And then we said, no, safety is also important. 20 years ago, it was new. It was uh, disturbing most of the companies. But now, this is very uh, normal for all construction companies to integrate safety in the basic procedures. So I'm pretty sure that in the coming years, biodiversity will also be part of the normal um, operations of the construction companies. And we try to help them to, to reach this. Uh. That's a very interesting concept, actually, how these efforts that you are all making at the moment and uh, you know, all these investments, uh, human and capital, will pay off in the end. So I think that's really something to bear in mind. And there's a lot of sensibilization to be done in that regard. I can understand that. Thank you very much. Um, so as you know, ladies and gentlemen, the King Eliaval uh, hydropower project is a public-private sector's uh, venture, and so I would like uh, to go back to you, Jeanette. Could you please tell us how um, can private actors such as Meridian contribute to the de development of uh, biodiversity-friendly projects uh, such as the one that we are discussing today? Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, well, as you could uh, under, well, here with, with all my colleagues here on, we call ourselves colleagues because uh, we're from different organizations, but we have worked together for a very, very long time. The project started in 2016, and since the beginning, um, I, I think that uh, what, what it, it, it took uh, was commitment. Uh, thinking that biodiversity was not like a minor impact of the project, that it was part of the project, and, and, and that as a project sponsor, we needed and we were obligated to, uh, to manage this issue uh, appropriately. 
So, uh, and to do so, then you have to first recognize the, the fact that it is complex, that it, it will need a lot of effort, and you have seen how much work we have put in this. Uh, we also have to, uh, to uh, work with all the stakeholders in order to agree on a common vision of what the project will, will uh, uh, generate in terms of uh, biodiversity benefits. We have to, to have the same understanding of what the project will be, the scope of the project, and, and how it will uh, eventually generate positive impacts. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, that it is important for Meridian because it's part of our business model, but the long-term uh, aspect of our involvement is also key because delivering positive impacts in terms of biodiversity will not happen overnight. It will take time. And again, uh, you know, with what Renal has said and, and Landry and, and, and uh, uh, Sylvain, it shows that uh, you, you need uh, dedication you need to a lot of trial and errors as well uh, with the, the the nursery, for instance. Uh, all this will happen if you are committed in the long term. And again, Meridian is uh, very uh, very involved in long term projects. Uh, we and, and when we talk about long term, it's 20, 25, 30, even 40, 40 and 50 years. Uh, so we will be there to make sure that whatever we have promised will be delivered in the end. Thank you very much. And in specific details, can you tell us what Meridian's approach was uh, to ensure that biodiversity concerns were addressed and successfully addressed, actually? Well, I, I, as I just mentioned, uh, the first thing was to recognize the importance of biodiversity as part of the project. Uh, and not try to go around it or diminish its importance and, 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 and to, to, to start very early in addressing the different concerns and issues. Uh, then what was important as well was to uh, hire very early on the right, uh, the right support, the right uh, experts. And uh, again, that was a, a real process with, uh, with a lot of, uh, of work to uh, define what was needed. Uh, and again, th that definition went through a lot of uh, engagement with the stakeholders and, 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 and the state for, and the authorities to define what was uh, uh, expected from us. Uh, what, uh, one of the key, uh, key elements was also to be um, open and, and responsive to work with international organizations such as uh, IFCs and, and, and we actually, and, and, and the, uh, the African Development Bank, and uh, in, 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 in this specific, uh, uh, um, on this specific uh, aspect, we were also open to work with uh, IFC's performance standards. Uh, so, you know, it, for, for some actors, it, these may uh, seem a bit demanding, but in the end, we know that it will help us deliver a very, uh, you know, high quality project. Uh, and in fact, again, Meridian uh, does, uh, does so uh, rely on uh, IFC's performance standards for all its projects in Africa. Uh, one of the, the other uh, key element was, again, to work with all the stakeholders, including the local communities, because they will be key in identifying what the real issues are uh, and, and, you know, to make sure you validate whatever you find on, on site, uh, then to develop the, the appropriate measures, and they will be also involved in the implementation of those measures uh, in real time. Thank you so much, Jeanette, and thank you uh, extremely, actually, for pointing out how important it is to also involve the local communities, because they know their land better than anybody else, so thank you. So I'd like us to remember commitment, working with local communities, uh, sensibilization, um, but at the end of the day, we are here today talking about biodiversity and its preservation, but this can seem a little bit elusive still, so I would like to go back to you, Reynald, um, to ask you, Actually, a very spe uh, simple question. How do you quantify losses and gains when it comes to biodiversity? You said a simple question. <laughs> it was simple to ask. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. As you might know, everybody, it's very difficult to quantify, first to know biodiversity, and then to quantify it. So, 
maybe a little bit louder. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, so the, just to go quickly to the to the quantification of biodiversity, we have used proxies. First of all, I said we had a robust baseline. We have identified the threatened species, the threatened uh, animals in the in the landscape of the project. And then we have to find, to develop a rational to how do we measure the losses, how do we measure the gains. Uh, we have used different approaches for aquatic um, habitats and the species living in these habitats. We have developed a rational linking uh, the forest cover and the forest management uh, to uh, the, um, the function of erosion control. In this landscape, the, s the slopes are very steep and um, uh, sedimentation in, is one of the threats in the local streams and rivers. So uh, based on uh, right management cover, uh, you might have a link between the level of sedimentation per year uh, in the river. So this was the rationale on which we have based our uh, quantification of uh, losses and gains for aquatic species and habitats. For terrestrial habitats and species, we have developed a rationale based on um, what we call in Central Africa the definition halo. Around the villages, you have a lot of bushmeat hunting. Uh, which uh, led to empty forest, let's say empty forest. Uh, you, are, you still have a forest, but the fauna within the forest is quite uh, nothing because of the hunting pressure. So based on that fact, uh, we have developed the protection of a forest to extract the forest from this pressure and to, um, to develop a, a better level of population, better abundance of the mammal species that we target in, the, in that proxy. Y again, it's still a proxy. This was for the habitat scale conservation actions included in the, the, the various plans I mentioned before. Then, beside that, we have developed uh, specific, uh, species specific actions. For the fauna, you know one of the pressures of the key wildlife in the Gabon is poaching, poaching illegal hunting. So we have developed within the compensation area and in the landscape of the project, meaning the southern part of the of the MB sector of um, Crystal Mountains National Park. We have developed a support to um, uh, National Agency for na of National Parks to, for them to patrol within the offset area and also in the landscape around the project to prevent and to control illegal activities, illegal hunting, illegal mining, illegal logging, uh, and poaching of uh, elephants uh, or parrots or crocodiles. Uh, and we have the first result. We have just received the first result with, uh, with the number of traps that have been discovered, the number of guns that have been uh, retained, etc. We have already some key figures about that. Uh, this was for the fauna. And for the flora, as uh, Landry already mentioned, we have developed um, um, a plant species conservation plan, uh, which is based on the uh, propagation of the threatened species that are collected within the project footprint. We collect them, we propagate them within the conservation nursery, and then we are able to reintroduce them in the wild once we are sure that they are able to provide uh, living individuals uh, which will survive in the wild. So we, there are a lot of good international practices around that. It's not, uh, there is no magic. We have a lot of uh, lessons to learn along the way, and that's why we are accompanied by experts uh, around this kind of activities. So that's why a habitat scale conservation approach and a species specific conservation approach in the framework of the offset management activities of that uh, project. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Renald. And that humility as well to, to, to admit that there is still a lot to learn and willing to bring on new experts. And I think that's very, very commendable. And so you've mentioned Landry, and I would like to go back to you. The, le volet humain a été mentionné ici plusieurs fois. Tout à l'heure, je vous ai interrompu quand vous nous parliez de la zone de compensation. Et j'aimerais bien justement que vous reveniez sur le sujet en nous parlant de la méthodologie qui a été donc euh, utilisée pour la mettre en place. Euh, un petit peu plus en détail, s'il vous plaît. Peut-être déjà positionner un peu où se trouve la, la zone de compensation. La zone de compensation est localisée donc au nord du village Andokfola, à un peu plus de 2 km. Elle est 
entre le village et, et le parc national de Monde Cristal. Il s'agit d'une zone qui est utilisée pour des usages coutumiers par les populations. Et donc, euh, la méthodologie qui a été mise en place est une méthodologie participative où nous avons associé aussi bien l'administration, parce qu'on est sur un permis forestier dans cette zone, mais également les ONG, euh, dans le, le cadre de la validation de la méthodologie, et les villageois, les, les villageois d'Andorfola, qui ont comme terrain pour les usages coutumés cette zone. La validation, je ne vais pas revenir dessus sur la méthodologie, je pense que Renald a expliqué, euh, je n'ai pas les capacités scientifiques pour l'expliquer. Nous avons consulté donc les populations, nous avons consulté l'administration, l'administration s'est portée garant de ce, de, de ce projet, qui a, validé la, qui a validé la méthodologie, qui a validé la localisation, et qui a été discuté avec les populations qui ont compris rapidement les enjeux hein, liés à la préservation de cette zone qui abrite la principale rivière qui, qui, qui donne le village. Euh, dans le cadre des de, de discussions, l'administration a facilité, hein, je tiens à la remercier également, a facilité les échanges avec les détenteurs de permis forestiers nous a permis de faire une délimitation de cette zone et également nous a accompagnés dans toute la procédure en matière d'obtention du décret de déclassement de cette zone, de déclassement et de, de reclassement de cette zone. Aujourd'hui, nous avons obtenu le, le décret de, de classement en, en sanctuaire de biodiversité. Les populations ont été associées à cette procédure les, les, les populations ont émis un certain nombre de, de commentaires, notamment l'usage de, de cette zone pour les activités coutumières. Et cet usage a été repris dans le, le décret qui donne clairement la libre, le libre accès à cette zone aux populations pour leurs activités villageoises. Merci beaucoup. Uh, I think it's a good time actually to be asking questions uh, from the audience. Would you agree? Shall we? Est-ce qu'il y a des questions dans la salle? Uh, N'hésitez pas à, la, à la poser votre question soit en français, soit en anglais. Est-ce que vous auriez des questions pour nos panélistes? Non? Bon, si, ah, monsieur, s'il vous plaît. On va vous apporter un micro. Merci de vous lever. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matnai Kwagi, uh, lecturer, University of Bisegi, and researcher. I would like to know uh, the project performance standards you've established for the Kingale Aval project. Where, was it based on ISO standards or you have other norms you are using for that? Thank you. Jimat, s'il vous plaît. Well, in fact, uh, the, the, when, when, when we decide to, to start a, a project like this, uh, you, you know, you first start with the, the authorization process and the design, of course, and, and all, but uh, and, and, and this authorization process is, uh, of course, in compliance with national regulations and laws. And at the same time, um, as, as I mentioned earlier, we wanted to, uh, to follow IFC's performance standards, which are well-known international standards. Uh, so we agreed with, uh, with the authorities of the content of this uh, detailed environmental and social impact assessment. And following this, once we, 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 we got the authorization, we worked on the detailed management plans. Now, Some management plans may, may include or may be linked somehow to ISO uh, norms or standards. Uh, now, each project at Meridiam will decide to, uh, whether or not they will uh, obtain specific, specific certification. And not all projects will necessarily uh, want to, to get the same kind of certification. In this case, 
uh, again, we, we, you know, following IFC's performance standards is extremely detailed and already very comprehensive. So it covers uh, health and safety, it covers uh, even the, the, the stakeholder engagement plan, it covers uh, the biodiversity, uh, for instance. So we didn't, uh, and, and, and that's the SPV that can, or the portfolio company or the project company that can actually uh, decide if, uh, you know, further standardization is needed. But to be honest, and, and, and you'll be able to, to maybe ask a question to someone from IFC uh, who will uh, answer other questions uh, later on. Uh, you know, we, we've, we are quite comfortable with the, the, the coverage of the IFC's performance standard for the moment. Thank you. Indeed, uh, we'll have a representative, thank you, Jeanette, for mentioning from the IFC and also the African Development Bank in the second part uh, of our, of our um, panel today. Uh, Reynald, I know that you wanted to answer as well. Am I right? No? <laughs> I saw you fundling with your microphone. I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, shall we take a second question? Does anyone have another question? No? So I have another question, actually. I would like to ask you, what are the main challenges that you all have encountered in your various areas? Can you briefly tell us about it and also how you overcame those? I'll start with you, Sylvain. Okay. Um, well, I'll come back to the resources. Um, uh, first of all, just to mention that uh, I joined the project in National Energy uh, seven months ago, so I cannot uh, be a witness of the huge work that has been um, processed for the two or three years before. So uh, my challenges are short uh, lifetime challenges. Uh, I would just mention about resources um, and the um, capability to find uh, people understanding, understanding the, the expertise aspect, but also the construction and project management aspect. Uh, I think there is a, a huge space for people really um, understanding about biodiversity, but also understanding about projects. And uh, well, it's always for us um, to find them, to keep them, because I think they, those people will be uh, demanded in many projects in the future. So, um, well, this is a challenge, I think, to, to, to find the good capabilities, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, et vous, Landry, quelles sont les, les, les plus grosses difficultés que vous rencontrez uh, dans votre quotidien, finalement? Je pense que le, le projet King Edavon, en lui-même, est un, est un grand défi, un, un énorme défi. Parmi les défis, je sais que la compensation, la procédure de la compensation a été un excellent voyage avec beaucoup de rebondissements. Mais je pense que le plus gros défi aujourd'hui, c'est l'acclimatation, c'est la transplantation des espèces qui sont entièrement sauvages, qui sont très peu connues, qui ont une physiologie pas étudiée, de les transplanter, de les acclimater, moi je dis souvent de les apprivoiser, c'est extrêmement, c'est un défi énorme pour nous. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Et, et uh, Reynald, uh, how about your position? What are the main challenges that you uh, witness? And if you want to share how you overcome them as well. Yes. Uh, okay. The, the, the main challenge, I think, was to, to develop something realistically feasible, but also complying with the the high, the high level uh, requirements of the performance standard of the, of the, let's say, IFC and African Development Bank. So um, practical solutions, simple solutions, we are able to monitor during 30 years. Uh, this is the key challenge for such projects in terms of implementation and, in the, and first of all of design, innovative solutions, and then implementation. So yes, keep it simple and practical. Very good keywords to remember there. Jeanette, I would like to finish with you as well, please. Uh, well, um, uh, just to maybe build on what uh, Sylvain has said about resources, it's also time. Timing is extremely important because when you develop 
and eventually. So, you know, what, 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 to, to, when do you start all this, this detailed work? And, you know, Nandri and, and Renal uh, have, have shown that it's extremely demanding. Uh, uh, so, so you, you have, have to plan, plan for it, you have to make time, you have to make budget for it, you have to, to start early, uh, and, and, and to be also open to review, sorry, to review the project, the scope and the design of the project. In this case, I don't think that it, it was uh, properly uh, shown because you, you Unfortunately, we, we had just half of the film for some reason, but, uh, you know, technical, due, due to technical uh, issues, but, um, but in fact, uh, when we first started in 2016, uh, you know, very early, uh, based on what we uh, understood about the, the environment, uh, and, and of the context in general, we downscaled or downsized the project by half. So, so that's a big, big commitment, commitment as well. well. But, but you, if, if you want to be able to do that, in order to, for instance, reduce the impacts on the, the natural habitats and, and, and biodiversity in general, you need time, you need energy, you need money. So this is one of the biggest challenge for uh, a project sponsor. Thank you very much, uh, dear panelists. We've Biodiversity is complex. You never know what you will find, but it was actually a lot of fun <laughs> and very interesting. We really, really enjoyed doing this, uh, this project because I think we all learned a lot. Mm -hmm. So bi biodiversity is hard work, but it's fun. <laughs> it's worth it. Thank you so much. And Renal, what are your key uh, takeaways for us today? Uh, as I already said, keep it simple and practical. It, you start with complex, complexity and at the end of the day you have to be understandable uh, to, to develop something that all stakeholders in the project are able to understand, to validate and to monitor them. So simple, practical and yes it is very funny and many thanks to the team because uh, it was really a great project with a lot of lessons learned. Yeah. Thank you very much. Et Landry, j'aimerais vous poser la, la même question. Quel point clé vous aimeriez que l'on retienne aujourd'hui C'est une bonne question, ça. Je, je pense que le, le projet en lui-même, nous n'avons pas euh, beaucoup d'étapes euh, passées. On est sur euh, la première année de la mise en œuvre des actions. On, mais je pense que aujourd'hui la, la compensation approche espèce marque, me marque tout le temps parce que c'est un apprentissage qui se fait tout le temps, la connaissance des espèces, la, le suivi avec des mortalités, des réussites. Moi, je pense que c'est un, c'est un cheminement humain. Un cheminement humain. C'est très joli. Merci beaucoup. Lance but not least, like I like to say, Sylvain, what are your key takeaways? Yeah, uh, I had a bit the same idea as uh, Landry. Um, we have a lot of studies uh, behind us, but we have also a very long journey, a 30 years um, operation uh, phase with uh, still some biodiversity commitments. So, uh, capitalization, knowledge improvement, uh, sharing of uh, information with the um, public administration. We share our reports, they learn about our experience, we learn about their knowledge. Do you have a question? Please. Juste pour nous donner une petite idée là sur le site de King Gillet, combien d'espèces nouvelles ont été rapportées, euh, que ce soit espèces végétales, euh, etc., faune, flore Juste pour donner une petite idée là de, de, de la situation du projet. Yeah. 
C'est une très bonne question, d'ailleurs. Si je me souviens bien, nous avons une sorte de 15 priorités de species de plantes, parmi une longue liste de plantes, And I won't say we have discovered a lot of new species, but we have clarified a lot of the taxonomy. Taxonomy is the name of the species. Um, uh, we have clarified a lot with the support of uh, international experts, such as the Missouri Botanical Garden and, uh, and uh, National Herbarium, but also amongst the fish species. We have clarified the status of uh, one fish species within a complex group of uh, fish species. We have also clarified the name status of the frog, the Stevart's frog, which was uh, 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 close to another frog in Cameroon, but it's not the same species. We have de definitely validated that. And we have also updated the sweat status of the species. This is one of the key, uh, let's say, positive outputs of all the studies that have been done. Um, maybe you know, but... Uh, Critical habitat triggers are based on endangered species, threatened species, and we have clarified a lot among the plants, but also among uh, some spe animal species, their threat status. So we make both science and conservation progress in knowledge. Uh, that's all I can say. Uh, but new, very new species, this is among the plants, uh, probably not, not more than three or four. Thank you so much. I mean, this is fascinating when we hear you talk and we understand why it was important to have this project in Gabon, which has such an incredible wildlife. Thank you. I would like to thank you all today for sharing your experience on the ground and sharing your knowledge and also advice. Thank you. I would like again to thank Ginette Bordua, Reynald Boulnois, Landrine Gala and Sylvain Bouillet. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.